let's really analyze what happens when we multiply these two binomials together. And, and so again, a binomial just means two terms. Each of these are, are binomials because they each have two terms. Okay, so when we multiply them together, we know a couple things are going to happen. First, we know this x is going to multiply that x, and we'll be left with x squared. So I'm just going to clean this up by actually erasing that arrow and just writing x squared. So we saw where that came from. Now, what I'm interested in is what happens when this x multiplies this 5, and also when this negative 3 multiplies this x. Okay, so that's going to be, the first term is going to be plus x times 5 is just 5x. And then negative 3 times x, that's going to be negative minus 3x, or plus negative 3x. I'm going to stick with the shorthand subtraction. Okay. And then also what happens when this negative 3 then multiplies this 5? Well, negative 3 times 5 is just negative... 15. Okay, and now we, we, we have four terms, but these two in the middle are like terms, so we can add them up, and we'll be left with, I guess I'll keep things color-coded, we'll be left with x squared plus 2x minus 15. Okay. So, what, what happened here? What happened? Well, this distribution process was easy enough, but what I mean by what happened is, let's take a look at what happens if we were to take that same expression, x squared plus 2x minus 15, and we wanted to factor it. And factoring is just undoing this distribution that we just did. So we... we did this we multiplied the two binomials together that was the that was the distributive property where we actually distributed these two terms or or sorry distributed one binomial to another and now we want to undo that how could we think about undoing that well the first thing is let's notice this 15 this negative 15 sorry that negative 15 came from the negative 3 and the positive 5 that's the only place it came from so if we're looking at, at factoring this into something where it's x times x, so if we want to basically if we want to take this and factor it into two binomials now, we know that the last term, this negative 15, comes from the constant terms. So the constant terms meaning just the numbers. These two spots are going to be filled with numbers. And this negative, maybe I should put that in orange. This negative 15 comes from the fact that we multiplied these two numbers together. So we know that those two numbers are going to be factors of negative 15. And let me show you what I mean. They could be 1 and negative 15, or they could be negative 1 and 15, because both of those uh, groups of factors multiply to negative 15. Also could be 3 and 5, or negative 3 and 5. And those are the factors of negative 15. And, and those are the only factors. So now what we have to do is we have to decide, okay, if this is going to factor into x plus or minus something and x plus or minus something, we just have to pick from these now. And, 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 what, and how do we decide which ones are the right ones? Well, that's where this middle term comes in, this 2x. The 2x came from the fact that the... the the 3 and the 5 added together to create 2. So it was really a negative 3 and a positive 5 added to create 2. So we already found our factors of 15 that are possibilities, and now we have to figure out which, which of these pairs add to positive 2. So, one, so this first one, if we added those together, we would get negative 14. That's not positive 2. This one we would get positive 14. That's not positive 2. If we add it up, oh, this should be 3 and negative 5, sorry. If we added those up, we'd get negative 2. That's not right. We need positive 2. But now if we have negative 3 and positive 5, we would get positive 2. And so that tells us that negative 3 and 5 are the correct 
numbers to place in these new binomials. So this is going to be minus 3 and plus 5. And we knew that because we know that 3 and 5, or sorry, negative 3 and positive 5 multiply to 15. That's what we need. We need that to happen for, to get this term. And we also know that they add up to get, to get make positive 2. And that's what we need to get this term here, or, or this term, same, same term. So that's how we go about factoring quadratics. So let's just do an example now where we don't already know the answer. You know, in this step, or in, in this problem, it was really just one problem. We knew the answer to begin with. So let's try it where we don't know the answer. So example three. Let's try and factor x squared uh, minus 8x plus 7. Okay, so based on the last example, we need numbers that multiply to 7. Multiply to positive 7. Well, we have 1 and 7 multiply to positive 7. 2 doesn't multiply anything to get to 7. 3 doesn't. 4 doesn't. 5 doesn't. We're already back to 7. But we also have negative 1 and negative 7. Because negative 1 times negative 7 really does equal positive 7. When you multiply negatives, two negatives multiplied together make a positive. Hopefully that's something you already know because I, ha I haven't mentioned that yet. Okay, so now we need to find the uh, one of these two groups better add up to negative 8 if we want to factor this. So this is we're trying to factor this into two binomials. Okay, so which of these add up to negative 8? Well, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious. We only have two choices, and negative 7 minus 8, or plus negative, or sorry, negative 1 plus negative 7 is equal to negative 8. And so that tells us that since these factors here, negative 1 and negative 7, multiply to positive 7, that's this guy, and then they add up to negative 8, that's this guy, we know that we have the right factors. So this is x minus 1 times x minus 7. And if you, if you don't believe me, then just multiply these back through and you'll, you'll see. In fact, why don't we do that? So if we multiply this back through, x times x will be x squared, so that takes care of the first term. Then we have x times negative 7, and that's just minus 7x. And then we have negative 1 times x, that's minus x. And then we have negative 1 times negative 7, and that is positive 7, so plus 7. And when we simplify this, we just get x squared minus 8x plus 7. Okay, so factoring is actually, it's not too hard. It gets a little bit harder if there's a coefficient on this x, and that's what we will do in the next video. See you then.